Would you like to take a so-called suggestibility test and make it something much, much more? Hi, I'm Dave Ruby, and recently on Facebook, uh, another hypnotist referred to finger magnets, which is an old uh, classic suggestibility test, as uh, basically a kind of a boring parlor trick. He likened it to putting uh, wallpaper in the ceiling. Don't ask. But uh, it did occur to me that that can be a simple parlor trick or it can be something much more. So if you'd like to learn how to take what was and can be, again, a simple suggestibility test, so-called, and make it something much more hypnotic and much richer, um, then keep watching. So I'll, I'll show you the basic uh, finger magnets. And if you want to, if you're not driving a car or operating a forklift, no one I know operates a forklift, but if you're doing something that requires your attention, then don't do it now. But if you're in a position you can kind of relax and concentrate, then uh, the basic premise is this, is you take your hands and clasp them tightly together, and Anthony Jack always says, and if you're of the mindset, if you want to make a desperate prayer, now's your, now's your chance. Um, but you take your fingers and put them up like this, and in a moment, but not yet, in a moment I'll have you open those fingers up and look at that space between those fingers and pretend they're magnetic. So if you take your fingers from about an inch apart and you focus that space between them, imagine those fingers are getting more and more drawn together. Like you can almost feel that magnetic pull drawing closer and closer together. And when they touch, you can allow those eyes to close and just take a moment and just relax and allow those arms to just gently drift down to your lap. And if those fingers haven't yet come together, you can just allow them to, just allow them to come together and allow those hands just to drift gently to your lap. And whenever you're ready and whenever you're through, you can come back to the room uh, fresh and rejuvenated and ready to hear the explanation of that. Now, uh, this is not really a secret or a, um, any kind of real big mystery, but if you, um, if you actually clasp your hands tightly together and put your fingers out there, that tightens the tendons in your hands, so it's hard to keep those fingers apart. So it's a bit of a cheap trick, right? Maybe, maybe not. Because if you have that experience, while the fingers coming together can be um, a physiological response, your experience is actually something different. So what we'll have you do this time is, whether that worked for you or not, is just allow yourself to have the experience. Now odds are if you have your hands clasped together that those fingers will come together naturally, but even if you know that's going to happen, just allow yourself to have the experience. Just allow your imagination to have the experience of as if. By that I mean just allow your imagination to um, or just imagine those fingers are actually magnetic and just notice how that feels to have that experience. So again, take your hands and clasp them together. Again, if you need to make a prayer, you know, now's your chance. But put the fingers together. And again, in a moment, but not yet. In a moment, same thing. I'll have you move those fingers apart about an inch. But I want you to really have the experience of just focusing on that change in those hands. And almost imagine like those hands are don't even belong to you, like they're just kind of apart from that body that you're currently residing in. So if you open those fingers about an inch apart and stare at that space, and just imagine those fingers are getting more and more magnetic. And as you know, the physiology is going to make that happen anyway. Just notice the experience as you have the experience of those fingers almost doing it all on their own and feeling that draw between those fingers, almost as if they're magnetic. You can also have the experience of perhaps imagining a push from the outside, pushing those fingers even tighter. And as those fingers touch, or as you notice that experience of that change of sensation, just allow those eyes just to close gently. 
or you can have the experience of just closing them yourself. Only now, imagine or think of those people that matter most to you and feel the love of those people or those things that matter in your life. And as you're aware of that emotion and those sensations, notice how those fingers get more and more stuck together. And if you tried to open those fingers, you might find that they're already stuck even more. Or if they were to even want to come apart, they can already begin to close right back up. And it doesn't really matter what's happening with those fingers. What matters is your ability to have the experience in those hands and those fingers. And as those fingers can either stay or move together and touch, you can just at your own speed allow those hands just to get heavy and just begin to sink at their own rate is you just allow yourself to have the experience of having experience, of allowing those hands to do whatever they want to, and perhaps experiencing the sounds of my cat jumping off the table, or just being aware of the ambient noise in your room or in your thoughts, and just allowing yourself to relax much more completely because it feels good to relax and you can come back to the room at your own speed. And as you come back to the room and kind of shake it off a little bit, what I would argue is it's not as much about the phenomena of the fingers coming together or feeling as if they can't come apart. It really is about allowing you to have your experience. And magnetic fingers is not necessarily a hypnosis induction, but if you notice yourself kind of going inside and relaxing and kind of responding to my voice and any suggestions, then that can be a bit of hypnosis. So one more I wanted to show you, this is again beyond magnetic fingers. Um, and many of you hypnotists, if you're watching, will probably recognize this, but it builds off the same, same premise. And what I'll argue is it doesn't matter as much about if the phenomena happens where something happens seemingly outside of your conscious control. I think it's more about you allowing yourself to have the experience. So let's give it a shot, shall we? So in a moment, but not yet, I'll have you place your hands about six inches apart. And it helps if they're kind of floating in the air as opposed to resting on a chair, but it may not really matter so much. But just allow your hands to, to um, well, space them about six inches apart, give or take. And so your arms are kind of hanging in front of you, not resting on a chair, for instance, or on your lap. And now I want you to imagine that those hands have almost like they're magnetic pulls inside those hands. and. Um, imagine there's an energy between those hands and if you're in a position to just close your eyes and focus on that space between those palms. And since everything is made of energy, you can just imagine that between those hands is this energy and if you can imagine feeling that or even actually feeling it. You could perhaps press against it and notice that change in that energy or just become more aware of that. And now with those eyes closed, you can just imagine those hands feeling that energy, drawing them closer and closer together. And obviously I don't know if those hands are already moving closer or if you're just becoming more aware of the sensation in those hands. Or if you can become more absorbed in the sensation of the space between or the space on the outside. And just for fun, it might be fun to imagine an energy pushing from the outside in 
drawing those hands closer and closer together. And perhaps those hands just want to touch all on their own. Or perhaps you might want to just allow those hands to come together at your own speed. And then just, just being aware of any tension in the body. You can allow those hands to begin to get heavier or perhaps just allowing them to drift down only as quickly as you're able to allow that tension to just relax and fade or dissolve or melt from the body. And as you allow that change of sensation inside, that can allow you to relax even more as those hands can just continue to drift or perhaps you can allow the body to adjust in whatever way is right for you. And at your own speed, whenever you're ready, you can come back to the room or perhaps you can take more time to enjoy this experience. But when you're ready and it's your own time, you can come back to the room feeling refreshed and maybe stretch a little bit and take a few nice deep breaths and just reflect on the experience and what that was like for you because yes it's nice if the phenomena happens and those hands and fingers move on their own and get stuck but i would urge you to consider the experience being more important than the phenomena because whether those hands move together or not, what may be more important is your ability to have the experience and just notice what happens. And anything that happens that you didn't consciously do is your unconscious. So again, if you're using hypnotic, uh, magnetic fingers rather, it can just be the trick of the tendons making the hands or fingers rather go together, or it can be something more hypnotic. You can make it something much more, uh, something much richer and more than just a cheap parlor trick. And of course, whether that worked or not, you can also then transition from that to magnetic hands, which is more of an overtly hypnotic phenomena based exercise. So if you have any questions, comments, or nasty remarks, you can leave those in the comments below. Or if you have suggestions for future videos, then you can either leave those in the comments below or email those directly. So thank you for your time. Have a great day.